Hey everybody, welcome back to Movies with Mia. If you're new to the channel, hi! I'm Mia Tiffany, and here we are watching the greatest classic films throughout history. Today we are continuing our series on Miss Audrey Hepburn with the film My Fair Lady. Before we get started, I would like to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your continuous support of the channel. And if you're interested in becoming an exclusive VIP Tiffany Club member, then I highly encourage you to check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. Now, before we get into our video, I wanted to clear something up. So in the last video, I said that Audrey's first child's name was Sam, but I actually misspoke. His name is Sean, not Sam. So I just wanted to clear that up. My Fair Lady was released in 1964, directed by George Cukor, which is my third attempt saying his name, so hopefully I said it right this time, <laughs> starring Audrey. Audrey Hepburn and Rex Harrison with other notable performances by Stanley Holloway, Wilfred Hyde White, Gladys Cooper, Jeremy Brett, and Theodore Bikel. All right, guys, at this point, we are going to get into some historical background. For those of you who want to jump right onto the film reaction, go for it. But for those of you who want to stay, we're going to get right into it. My Fair Lady originated as a comedy titled Pygmalion, written by George Bernard Shaw in the early 1900s. After many abandoned attempts, it was adapted into a musical by songwriting duo Alan J. Lerner and Frederick Lowe. So Lerner and Lowe, not to be mistaken with Lerner and Rowe, <laughs> constructed the musical to highlight Highlight its leading lady, Eliza Doolittle. However, once Rex Harrison was signed on to play Henry Higgins, they realized that he had enough star power to really highlight that character as well. So they essentially rewrote the musical to kind of highlight both Eliza Doolittle and Henry Higgins. And in doing so, they actually changed the name from Pygmalion to My Fair Lady. My Fair Lady in its stage version ran for almost six years on Broadway with just shy of 3,000 performances, which at the time was record breaking. The stage version received high praise from both critics and audiences, which eventually grabbed the attention of Warner Bros. studio head Jack L. Warner. Warner Bros. would eventually obtain the film rights for a whopping $5.5 million. Once Warner Bros. obtained the film rights, the plans were put in motion to start casting. Now, Warner Bros. initially offered the role of Henry Higgins to Cary Grant. Cary Grant said not only would he not work on the film, but he also would refuse to watch the film if they did not allow Rex Harrison to reprise his role. Warner Brothers also decided to cast Audrey Hepburn in the role of Eliza Doolittle after her success with The Nun Story back in 1959 that generated a lot of profit for the studio. Now, this particular casting of Audrey Hepburn did cause a little bit of controversy, which we will talk about later. But but for now, My Fair Lady would actually go on to be nominated for 13 Oscars and it would win eight, including Best Picture, at the 37th Academy Awards. Okay, on to some interesting facts. So Audrey originally signed on to the project with the idea that she would be doing all of her singing parts. She would spend six weeks preparing by taking singing lessons, but unfortunately it was later decided that most of her singing parts would be dubbed over by Miss Marnie Nixon, who was the unspoken hero of of the 1950s and 60s musical movie genre. <laughs> now, apart from that upset, Audrey was also dealing with some anxiety due to Warner Bros. controversial casting of her instead of Julie Andrews, who originated the role on Broadway. Warner Brothers executives felt that Julie Andrews just simply wasn't famous enough to take on Eliza Doolittle in the movie. Audrey was very anxious because she felt that the media would turn against her because of this controversy. Julie Andrews did end up getting some revenge on Warner Brothers, so she actually went on to play the titular role of Mary Poppins, for which she would later win the Oscar for Best Actress for. And that, in turn, elevated her star status. Warner Brothers considered her Oscar a huge upset, despite the fact that My Fair Lady was nominated for and won more Oscars than Mary Poppins. With all that being said, I am so excited to watch My Fair Lady, but before we do, y'all know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, get cozy, and let's get in to My Fair Lady. Ooh, fun, exciting music right here at the beginning. I already love it. Look at all the flowers, too. It's so pretty. You're in time to care. All right, I'll get it. I'll get it. Look where you're going, dear. Look where you're going. I'm so sorry. 
It's really amazing to see how the technology of Technicolor kind of evolved through the years. It has gotten so much better since the 1930s up to this point. Like, it, it looks beautiful. Is there any sign of it stopping? I'm afraid not. It's worse than before. Um, oh, it's loud of a poor girl. Oh, I can change half a crown. Here, take this for top. Yes, three halfpence is that news to you? I feel like she really gets to character act in this film also. Definitely playing a role that she's not usually playing. There's a bloke here behind that pillar taking down every blessed word you're saying. I ain't done nothing wrong by speaking to the gentleman. I never yes. spoke to him except to ask him to buy a flat off me! Oh, no. oh man, she's making like a huge like commotion. Do I look like a policeman? You just show me what you wrote about me. Oh. oh. What's that? It ain't proper right, and I can't read it. I say, Captain, now buy your flower off a poor girl. <laughs> He's like writing down with her accent in his writing. That's crazy. How'd you come to be up so far east? You were born in Listen Grove. It won't fit for a big delivery. Live where week. you like and stop that noise. <laughs> come, come, he can't <laughs> How does he know all that information about her? Wow, he's like the freaking human encyclopedia. The science of speech. Mm. That's my profession. Mm. I can place a man within two miles in London. Leave a poor girl! Woman! <laughs> Don't sit there crooning like a bilious pigeon. <laughs> that is so... <laughs> that is so mean! By right, you should be taken out and hung. Cold-blooded murder of the English tongue. Ow! Heavens, what a sound. Heavens, what a sound indeed. Oh, I like that he's kind of he's kind of sing-songing here or sing-talking Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? If you spoke as she does sir instead of the way you do, you might be selling flowers too I kind of like the I like his voice when he's singing There are even are places where English completely disappears. Well in America, they haven't used it for years <laughs> That's true. That's absolutely true. I can vouch for it in France Every Frenchman knows his language made to Z. The French don't care what they do, actually, as long as they pronounce it properly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Use proper English, you're regarded as a freak. Why can't the English learn to speak? There you go. <laughs> I bet that people were just laughing their butts off in there. Like, just the way that he was, like, describing all of the different ways that different, like, people use their languages. That's hilarious. In six months, I could pass her off as a duchess at an embassy ball. Do you know Colonel Pickering? I am Colonel Pickering. I'm Henry Higgins. I came from India to meet you. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, small world. Wow. That's crazy. Indian dialects have always fascinated Why me. Why, flower kind, sir? I'm shocked for me lodging. You said you could change half a crown. Here, take the old blooming bath! <laughs> Get back six pence! I love her character. Oh my gosh. So colorful. All I want is a room somewhere. Oh, I lots love Marty Nixon's top, voice. Kicking lots of eat. Wouldn't it be lovely? I'm not gonna lie, I'd love to see Julie Andrews do this. I wonder if there's like a recorded version of this Broadway play. Got some tap dancing here too. Okay, I see you, boo. I like that Audrey gets to show a little, a little bit of her dancing skills in this. Just a little bit, but still, we get some of that. My daughter Lars will be along soon. <laughs> when did you ever give her any fact? I introduced <laughs> her to this here planet, I did. Then I disappear and leave her on her own to enjoy it. Me personally, I really love the Cockney accent. I feel like there's something so like edgy about it. There's just something to it. Good morning to you, Algernon. No brass time. We're stopping in sync here. I kind of like that. A lot of choreography going on in this scene for sure. Look at the guy with all the baskets on his shoulder. <laughs> I wonder how hard it was to stand like that for all that time. Oh, a, what a surprise. Slip your old dad just off a crown to go home on. Oh, I ain't gonna take me hard-earned wages and let you pass them on to a bloody pub keeper. Woo! She has a mouth on her. Again, loving the f the color palette of the flowers. It's very beautiful. In six months, I could pass her off as a duchess at an embassy ball. She's thinking about her, his offer. I could even get her a job as a lady's maid or a shop assistant, which requires better English. I feel like that's a pretty decent offer, especially if it allows me to get, like, you know, money. Now, how many vowel sounds do you think you've heard all together? 24. Wrong by 100. What? Now, listen to them one at a time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gosh, hundred vowel sounds. It's crazy. I'm Mrs. Burst, the <laughs> housekeeper. I'd like to see the professor, please. Mr. Higgins, it's a young woman who wants to see you, sir. That is so such a strange. What a strange sound. Show her in, Mrs. Pierce. Very well, sir. It's for you. I'll show you how I make records. 
Good morning, my good man. Oh, no, no, no. This is the girl I jotted down last night. Her accent is so good. Oh, my gosh. I wonder if she had to work on that. Down be so saucy. You ain't heard what I come for yet. I'm come to have lessons. I am, and to pay for them too. Make no mistake. The Pickering should just throw her out of the window. Why is he so mean to her? He has, like, an arrogance to him. I want to be a lady in a flower shop, but they won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. And he treats me as if I was dirt. I know what lessons cost, and I'm ready to pay. I wonder if this is a legitimate, like, issue. You can't work in a certain place because of the way you talk. Now, I wonder if it's because of the time period, or if it's still, like, a legitimate thing that people go through. I don't know. Sit down. What's your name? Eliza Doolittle. How much you propose to pay me for these lessons? Won't give more than a shilling. Take it all One it. shilling. He's gonna reluctantly take her on. Even though I know he's fascinated by her. That's why he approached her. Higgins, what about your boast that you could pass her off as a duchess at the embassy ball, eh? I'll bet you all the expenses of the experiment that you can't do it. <laughs> Don't give him incentive because he'll go and do it. Now he's intrigued. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll make a duchess of this draggletail gutter snipe. You've got to learn to behave like a duchess. Now take her away, Mrs. Pearson. If she gives you any trouble, wallop her. Wallop her? Oh my gosh. You can't take a girl up as if you were picking up a pebble on the beach. Why not? The girl has some feeling. Well, have you, Eliza? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, you are. Have some chocolates. Chocolates? She wanted chocolates? Even though he's doing it for his own selfish interests, I mean, it's a, a, an opportunity. You know, you can't be a nice girl inside if you're dirty outside. Beautiful bedroom, okay. Too good for the locks of me. Look at that vanity. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. It's like China, you know, like fine China. That's crazy. Oh, what's this? Wash That's ourselves, Eliza. A bath. Where I'm going to wash you. Not me. Oh, yes, babe. Oh, yes, you. No! <laughs> oh my gosh. He's like, what in the world is going on up there? There's no way that tub's generating that much steam. <laughs> they are pumping steam into that room. If I'm to be in this business, I shall be responsible for the girl. No advantage is to be taken of her position. Are you a man of good character where women are concerned? Oh, he started up asking him, like, straight up. I have a feeling there's going to be a transformation in both of them. She's going to transform, but he's also going to transform too gonna be a little bit softer towards her. That's what I feel. I'm an ordinary man who likes to live his life free of strife. But let a woman in your life and your serenity is through. Must not have had good experiences with women, I, I guess. He's about to get a cruel awakening. I prefer a new edition of the Spanish Inquisition than to ever let a woman in my life. Someone must have burned him bad. I feel like he's describing one woman. Let a woman in your life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's horrendous. So this is <laughs> So this is his idea of what a woman would be like in his life. I shall never let a woman in my life. I don't know, sir. We'll see. It's just it's a treasure to see Rex Harrison kind of be very comfortable and natural in his role. For sure. Thanks for hospitality, I have George. seen this man somewhere. Send the bill to Buckingham Palace. Come on. Back to work. Don't you dare mention that word in my presence again. I love his hat, too. I've been trying to figure it out the whole this whole time. Ah, don't worry, boys. We'll get out of this somehow. Someone else will do the blinking work. Wear a little bit a luck you'll never work. Strange, that sounds just a little bit like a uh, spoonful of sugar from Mary Poppins. Hmm, I wonder. What are you doing in Eliza's house? Moved in with a swell Eliza has. She wants her things sent over to Wimpole Street, care of Professor Egan. He's like, now why would she be over there? Hmm. Oh. She looks pretty. <laughs> I'm noticing now that this, this, particular era was like the hot spot or like the the golden era of musical movies there's a dustman downstairs he says you'll have his daughter here phew i say well send the blackguard up professor riggins yeah there you Morning are gun. okay i have a question for my my viewers in the uk what does that mean hello governor is it a reference to something can you guys tell me what that is i'm genuinely curious where that originated from what is it you want, Doolittle? 
I want my daughter, that's what I want. I'm glad to see you have a spark of family feeling left. Take her away at once. What? What else did you come for? To see if his daughter is okay, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. Eliza's father has come to take her away. Give her to him, will you? Wait a minute. I took a sort of a fancy to you and... <laughs> <laughs> his breath probably stings, poor thing. He's just like, ugh, like repulsed. Might be open to his uh, an arrangement. What's a five pound note to you and what's Eliza to me? <laughs> Have you no morals, man? Have you no morals? <laughs> out here pimping his daughter. Will you take advantage of a man to do him out of the price of his own daughter, fed and clothed by the sweat of his brow? Is five pounds unreasonable, I put it to you. I was, I under, I, I feel his reasoning. Like, what's 18 years to five pounds, right? We better give him a fiver. You couldn't spend it better. Let's give him ten. Ten pounds is a lot of money. Now you just give me what I ask, Governor. Not a penny less, not a penny more. I feel like Rex has these very, like, unique eyes. I don't know, but they're- I love them. Are you sure you won't have ten? Ah, no, perhaps- Wow! Oh my wow. gosh! Oh, oh my. it's Eliza! Ew, what you doing here? Obviously, that's Audrey, but she's, like, not- like, her persona is gone. Like, she's- she is Eliza Doolittle. She's doing fantastic. Ew, what do you come for? Say your vows. It came for money. I I, 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 L, you. Oh! oh. <laughs> Preposterous. You ain't got no art, you ain't. Eliza, you'll say your vowels correctly before this day is out, or there'll be no lunch and no chocolate. He is ruthless. He's like, you will learn to speak correctly, or you will not eat. I, I like my chocolates. Just you wait in me again, just you wait. You'll be broke and I'll have money. Just you wait in me again, just you wait. She's <laughs> She's like, you better watch your back, Henry. I'm coming for you. The king will say, oh, lies the oh. whole thing. All I want is Henry begin Ed. Done. Done. <laughs> Could you imagine? I love this, this effect with the camera. The dreamy, like dreamlike state. Very cool how they're able to do that. Ready? Oh no! It was all a dream. It was an illusion. <laughs> now for your H's. Every time you pronounce the letter H, clear the fame will waver. That's uh, gotta be bad for your it. sensory. Hurricanes hardly ever happen. Oh, cause in the Cockney they don't they don't say the the ha. Huh. It's like silent. In Hartford and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly ever happen. Oh no. Hever <laughs> He's like what? Start from the very beginning. Just do this. Go, ha 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 ha. <laughs> she looks crazy. <laughs> Poor Professor Higgins doesn't rest, doesn't eat. Get to see kind of his perspective here, or what they think of him. How kind of you to let me come. No, kind She's getting of you, better. Kind of you. It's like cup of tea. Say cup of tea. Cup of tea. No, no. Oh my gosh, pastry sounds so good right now. I'm so hungry. On group night every night. Now, I want you to read this just as if the marbles were not in your mouth. Marbles? Oh geez, that sounds like she could choke on that. With butter, milk, or fat. I can't! Tell me why. With butter, Victory, I can't hear a word. <gasps> she just swallowed one. I read that those... Marbles are actually grapes, so luckily they're not real marbles in her freaking mouth. Oh, it doesn't matter. I got plenty more. Open your mouth. Oh! Wow. oh. Quit Professor Higgins pounding, pounding in our brain. <laughs> House, the house servants are just done. They're just over it. They're like, just quit. Just stop. I can't! God's sake, Higgins. Do be reasonable. I know you're tired. Think what you're trying to accomplish. You can do it, Eliza. I have great faith in you. She is going to kill it. I feel it. The majesty of the English language. And that's what you set out to conquer, Eliza. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Yes, queen. That's fantastic. I have goosebumps. Isn't that crazy? And where's that soggy plain? In, in Spain. Spain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Oh, Gloria 
it. She got it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Now it's time to go to bed because it's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> We'll take her to the races. The races? My mother's box at Ascot. First thing in the morning, we'll go out and we'll buy her a dress. Eliza, you must put down your books and go to bed. I feel like there is a beautiful dress coming and I'm so ready for it. I could have danced all night, could have spread my wings. Morning Nixon, her voice is like so beautiful. But I love Audrey too, don't get me wrong. I'm just giving some praise to Marnie. She ought to be in I love how the housekeepers are just fed up with this. They're like, please, please go to bed so that we can go to bed. <laughs> Sweet dreams. But now it's time to sleep. I do feel bad though that she had to be dubbed. Nonetheless, the final product was beautiful. Okay. What a fantastic scene. Feel the fashion essence. <laughs> what a gripping moment at the Ascot opening day. It has begun. Wow. <laughs> this is like staring straight forward black and white as a color palette is so much fun because obviously they're contrasting colors, but when they come together, you're able to create this very striking color palette. What a beautifully colored scene. That is so great. And it beautifully captures like the real reason why you go to races. Like everyone who's anyone is here dressed to the nine, you know? It's all about the fashion. Those gray outfits on those men are so pristine. And then I mean the women, they look just gorgeous. Oh, are we wearing the same hat? Oh, <laughs> how embarrassing. They're wearing the same, not the same outfit, but definitely the same hat. And he's of course in, in brown. And tweed just standing right out of the crowd. Mother? Oh, the mother's in gray. Henry, what a disagreeable surprise. What a disagreeable surprise. She's like, you're not even dressed for Ascot. Common flower girl. She has strict instructions as to her behavior. Where's the girl now? Oh, she's stunning. And of course, she has just a little bit of red and a little bit of pink. Like, she's trying to fit in, but she's also not quite a part of the crowd yet. I would be so bad if I were in that outfit. I'd be like, don't talk to me, don't look at me. I'm in my element. Stop. <laughs> May I introduce Miss Eliza Doolittle? How kind of you to let me come. Delighted, my dear. How do you do? How do you do? And Freddie Einsford Hill. Ooh, how do you do? <laughs> the first race was very exciting, Miss Doolittle. Will it rain, do you think? Hurricanes hardly ever happen. <laughs> How awfully funny. Higgins and Eliza, like they're the only two in this entire scene that are just not like showered in black and white, like completely. So I wonder if that's like a little subliminal message to the audience, like, you know, eventually they're they're gonna come together in some way. My aunt died of influenza, but it's my belief they'd done the old woman in. My father kept ladling gin down her throat. Oh. Ladling gin? down her throat wow <laughs> done her in but you surely don't believe your aunt was killed them she lived with would have killed her for a hat pin let alone a hat i love how she's speaking phonetically correctly but she still has her own slang terms i love that yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. i don't know whether there's enough time before the next race i have a bet on number seven I should be so happy if you would take it. That's very kind of you. His name is Dover. Mm-hmm. He is interested. <laughs> oh, here we're gonna watch it again. Look, it has begun. She's gonna say Come something. On. Come on, Dover. Come on, Dover. <laughs> Move your blooming arm! <laughs> yes! She fainted. Gotta love that there's still a little bit of her personality there. Like you can take a fish out of the ocean, but you can't take the ocean out of the fish, right? I advise you to give it up now and not put yourself and this poor girl through anymore. Pickering and I are at it from morning till night. It fills our whole lives. You're a pretty pair of babies playing with your life, doll. These outfits are completely outrageous, but they are absolutely fantastic. Progress, sweetheart, progress. I wish I was there to give her a pep talk. Dang it. 
Oh, it's the man from the horse race. With those dark features and those blue eyes. I see you, boo. If he starts singing, my heart's gonna explode. <laughs> we'll have to stop the camera. I say, sir, uh... Oh, he ran inside. Like, nobody was talking to him. He looks like Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, that's not okay. Yes, sir? Uh, is, is Miss Doolittle in? Whom shall I say is calling? Freddie Einsford Hill. Tell her I'm the chap who was snickering at her. The chap with the gorgeous blue eyes and the dark features. You're so handsome. <laughs> Some eyes, several stories high, just on the street where you live. I'm totally done. <laughs> and of course his voice is like an angel. I feel like he's singing to me. <laughs> I'm just gone. I forgot there was a camera for a second. There's nowhere else on earth that I would rather be on the street where you live. Oh, that was such a precious song. He's totally just enamored. I'm terribly sorry, sir. She doesn't want to see anyone ever again. Tell her that I'll wait. I'll be happier here. It's like, suit yourself. You handsome stranger. Do you realize what you've got to try and teach this poor girl within six weeks? I'm trying to tell you that I want to call off the bet. You understand, Higgins? It's over. I was going to say, I wonder if this movie inspired the movie She's All That, because it has some similarities in it. It'd be very interesting to know. Are you so sure this girl will retain everything you've hammered into her? You act as though she doesn't matter at all. I have goosebumps. <gasps> Stunning. The Joker? Who is this queen? I watched a documentary with Audrey and she spoke about this moment. She always felt very unattractive, but she said in this moment, she felt absolutely beautiful. You have to just acknowledge it, sir. Oh, he may not say it, but you can see it in his eyes. Oh, what a fantastic act one, guys. Wow, amazing. Wow, that was fantastic. But guess what? We're gonna keep going. All right, guys, here we go, part two. Woo! Maestro, don't you remember me? No. I'm your pupil. Your first, your greatest, your best pupil. I speak 32 languages. I know everyone in Europe. Okay, baby, I see you 31 languages. So he, like, taught him. So I'm sure he probably has some of that arrogance kind of rubbed off on him. Excuse me, sir, you're wanted upstairs. Excuse me. She's absolutely stunning. What an enchanting young lady you have with you this evening. Oh, 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 thank you. Look at look at the guys. They're like like just mesmerized. But what is the what's the problem? Because there's always a problem that happens, right? The young lady with Colonel Pickle. Find out who she is. With pleasure. Wait, I'm confused. Oh, maybe I'm not confused. He's gonna expose her. Queen of Transylvania. Oh, she's about to approach her. Oh no. Quite charming. I'd be like, the Queen of Transylvania just called me charming? <gasps> oh my god, I would melt right there. Because <laughs> if a queen calls you charming, you know you're charming. Miss Doolittle, my son, would like to dance with you. Oh, I would feel like, so I would feel like the belle of the ball. <laughs> He's so perplexed. Why does he look so confused? I don't get it. Oh, is this gossip? This is gossip. Are we playing telephone? We're playing a game of telephone right now. What is so important that we're whispering things that we can't know about? <laughs> it was an immense achievement. A total triumph. Higgins, I salute you. Uh, why are we not congratulating Eliza for also achieving? A lot of the glory goes to uh, you. Oh, wow. But there he was, that hairy hound from Budapest. Never have I ever known a Rudapest. A Rudapest. Love the rhyming in these songs. He glowed as if he knew he'd won. Her English is too good, he said. That clearly indicates that she is foreign. She was a born Hungarian. Ah, oh, he made a mistake. She's not Hungarian. She is a princess. <laughs> he said royalty is absolutely written on her face. She's like literally in a corner. Somebody put baby in a corner and they need to take her out of that corner, all right? Because nobody puts baby in a corner. Well, thank God that's over. Like, did he even remember she was in the room? Oh, Mrs. Pierce, I meant to ask her to give me coffee in the morning instead of tea. Leave a little note for her, will you, Eliza? Like she's... Uh... Wow, Eliza. Oh, wow, you can see, like, the pain. 
Yeah, what have I done with my slippers? Is anything wrong? <laughs> She's about to freaking strangle him! My god! You wouldn't care if I was dead, I'm nothing to you! May I ask if you complain of your treatment here? Has anybody behaved badly? Oh, you don't pretend that I have treated you badly. No. No. Not physically anyway, but maybe a little bit mentally and emotionally. It's all over now. Nothing more to worry about. Now you're free and you can do what you like. Oh, what am I fit for? What have you left me fit for? Yeah, she literally came from poverty, bro. Gain some perspective, Higgins. What's to become of me? You might marry, you know. I sold flowers. I didn't sell myself. Now you've made a lady of me. I'm not fit to sell anything else. I feel like he has some social skills that he needs to learn. <laughs> when to, when, and when not to say certain things. Do my clothes belong to me or to Colonel Pickering? Please, will you tell me what belongs to me and what doesn't? Will you take these to your room and keep them safe? You've wounded me to the heart. I've wounded you to the heart? Oh, wow. He is just ignorant. Damn the coffee and damn you. And damn my own folly for having lavished my hard-earned knowledge on a heartless gutter snipe. The audience is frustrated with her. Like, he's not understanding that she is still a, a person. He needs to wake up a little bit. Oh my gosh, Prince Eric what is still the standing the there. Way. Oh, she's gonna come out. Oh gosh, what if he's gonna talk to her? Freddy, whatever are you doing here? I spend most of my nights here. The only place where I'm happy. You know, in any other circumstance, that would sound really freaking creepy. If you're in love, show me. Haven't your lips longed for my touch? Show me. He's like, oh, I'll show you, baby. <laughs> you can see it in his eyes. Never do I ever want to hear another word. Say one more word and I'll scream. <laughs> She's like, you're not doing enough, pal. Words aren't going to work for me. Taxi. Where are we go? Where I belong. Darling, shall I come with you? If you want. <laughs> her home. Those purple flowers are so rich in their color and vivid. Mind if I warm my hands? Go right ahead, miss. For a second I thought you were somebody else. Who? Early morning light playing tricks with my eyes. A lady like you shouldn't be walking alone around London this hour in the morning. But I wonder if she feels like she doesn't belong there either. So there's really this kind of conflict in her head of where, where she belongs in the world. What's he done to you? Wrote to an old American blighter named Wallingford. The old bloke died and left me four thousand pounds a year in his blooming will. Oh my gosh. Oh, so now he's dripping in the dough. I see you, boo. Middle class morality. Be another couple of hours and we have to be at the church. Are you getting married? Church? Your stepmother wants to marry me. Why don't you give the money back? It's easy to say chuck it. <laughs> He's like, oh, woe is me, I'm rich now. Or well off, at least. You stand on your own two feet, you're a lady now, and you can do it. Eliza, it's getting awfully cold in that taxi. Are you all finished here, Eliza? Yes, Freddy, I'm all finished here. She's a very complex character. Usually you think a musical and you're like, there's no character development, it's a musical. She's a human, she's a human character. And it's just, it's its so interesting to see Audrey really play through this. Talk about a stag party, am I right? In the morning, let's have a whopper. Get me to the church on time. He's like, I can have all the fun tonight, but tomorrow you better get me to the church on time. <laughs> I am flying. They shoot me down. Oh my God, I could not drink that much. I tell you what, if that were me, I would not be getting to that church on time. <laughs> <laughs> get yourself a nice like three hour nap and then get all nice and sober for your wedding eliza's bolted well phone the police what are they there for in heaven's name you can't give eliza's name to the police but why not i want to find the girl she belongs to me i paid five pounds for her she belongs to me i told you that object mentality opposite a triumph at the ball what could have depressed her what could have possessed her i can't understand the wretch at all. Your emotion, your indifference towards her, sir. But women are irrational, that's all there is to that. They're nothing but exasperating, irritating, vacillating, maddening, and infuriating hags. Somebody hurt him real bad. What is his mentality? I don't even understand it. Oh, Mrs. Spears? Yes, sir? Why can't a woman be more like a man? Why is thinking something women never do? Why is logic never even tried? Oh, he is really just letting this carry out. Why can't a woman? Be like me. That would be awfully dreadful. I wish she had a chance to retort. I just sat there, never said a word to you. Not a word. I should not have thrown my slippers at him. I should have thrown the fire irons. Oh, What's that? Henry, I knew it wouldn't be too long. Oh, I like her 
lavalier. Her whole outfit. The mom's whole outfit is a freaking mood. Beautiful. Now you get up and come home and stop being a fool. Eliza came to see me this morning and I was delighted to have her. See, I had to put on my Sunday manners for this thing. That's precisely what I mean. And I'll see her damn first. He totally does not see her as like a human. He sees her as like an object. The difference between a lady and a flower girl is how she is treated. Mm, he's acting like... <laughs> A chastised little boy. Freddie Hill writes me twice and three times a day. In short, you want me to be as infatuated about you as he is, is that it? That's not the sort of feeling I want from you. Oh. I want a little kindness. There's this sort of different relationship that they have here. It's not quite a romantic relationship. She's looking for, like, you know, just kindness. Because he's really, like, he's really rigid. What I did was not to want you to make love to me and not forgetting the difference between us, but more friendly like i've made you a consort for a king i really like that they've given her that that humanity almost it's so empowering to watch as a young woman it's beautiful what a dominated fool what an adipated fool was i you are not the beginning and the end she's like realizing that he's not this great man that she had in her mind of england <laughs> still will be here without you Art and music will thrive without you. She's like, I don't need you. <laughs> what a turn of events. Hey, George, I really did it. Eliza, you're magnificent. Now you're a tower of strength. Goodbye, Professor Higgins. You shall not be seeing me again. She said, bye, sir. Thank you, but I'm good. Wow, that was a turn of events. I did not see that coming. She's like, I don't Mama! need you. What is it, Henry? What's happened? She's gone. Well, of course, dear. What did you expect? <laughs> what did you expect? Her to stay? You're treating her that way? Ooh, it rattled him. He's like, she's like, I don't need you. And that rattled him. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> kind of took him out of his own little bubble. I wonder how this is going to, like, change everything. I've grown accustomed to her face. She almost makes the day begin. I've grown accustomed to her look, to her voice, accustomed to her. I love that now, <laughs> now she's like, I'm good. He's like, oh, but I'm kind of interested now. He ain't above giving lessons, not him. I heard him say so. I washed my face and hands before I come, I did. Where the devil are my slippers? Oh, that was a good ending. I really enjoyed that film a lot. I think... That it was very different than what I originally thought it was going to be going into it. I thought it was going to be more of a romantic film, but I was pleasantly surprised with the way that that ended. And I think that they set it up very well for it to end very, or to, uh, for it to end as it did. I really liked that. I think that Audrey was so good in the role of Eliza. I really, really loved the character of Eliza because she was so fleshed out, so human. She wasn't, again, like this two-dimensional female character with no real, like, genuine human emotions. She was like, she was a genuine human. She had thoughts and feelings and you felt with her and you you empathized with her when she felt like she was being stepped on her and like passed over. You felt that and you felt the frustration when Professor Higgins was just not like reciprocating that feeling of, of empathy almost. I don't know if that maybe empathy is a strong word, but he was being very indifferent and you felt that with her. You were like, that's really like, you're not understanding the point, Professor Higgins. Um, so I really liked that I was able to empathize with her character and find relatability with her. In terms of Rex Harrison, I did find his character a bit frustrating, but not in the sense that I didn't like him. I think that they still made him somehow, I guess, um, tolerable. <laughs> so it wasn't like I was like, oh, I hate this character. It was just like, he's frustrating, but he, he lacked perspective. So it made sense that he didn't understand until she made him realize like, this is life without me in your life. And he really realized it at, at the end there. So I think... The fact that they were able, they, meaning the screenwriters, were able to really make these characters depth, like have depth as well as the story, but also keep it lighthearted enough that no one is really like getting like intense emotional feelings. Very, I, I like the way that they were able to kind of make that happen. 
Um, Because it essentially still was a musical and it was still fun. You still got, you know, these fun, cheerful songs. But it was also very empowering to watch as a young woman, I think, definitely. Overall, I really enjoyed this film. I think that it was something that I wasn't expecting, but it it was in all the best ways that I wasn't expecting. So thank you guys so much for recommending it. And thank you so much for watching it with me. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to become an official Tiffany Club member, then I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to stay in the loop. If you would like to see this film's full reaction, you will find it on my Patreon, as well as our Flick Pick polls, which allow you to vote for future videos, and our MWM live streams, where we come together every other week as the Tiffany Clubbers that we are, and we sit down and we watch one classic movie live via Zoom. If that's something that sounds of interest to you, then go ahead and check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. In the next video, we are going to be finishing our Audrey Hepburn series with the film Wait Until Dark. I'm very excited to watch this because a lot of you have told me that this is a very different role of Audrey's. So I'm very excited to see her in this. If you have not seen Wait Until Dark, go ahead and check it out before you watch the reaction. I have provided links down in the description box below of where I bought my physical copy and where you can stream it online. If you have a recommendation for any classic Hollywood films, head on over to my website, www.miatiffany.com. Scroll all the way down and you will find our new recommendation form. Drop all of your recommendations there. Our question of the day comes from Sue Prost. Sue asks, have you studied theater or film because you have more depth to your analysis for someone so young? That is a great question, Sue. Um, and thank you so much for your question. You know, the most that I've studied in terms of theater and film was probably high school theater. And then I kind of took a little break when I went to college. I kind of tried other things. Um, but I've always had this great love for cinema. I've been so fascinated with it. I've loved how people have kind of talked about it. Um, and then just watching it as an audience member, I was just so enthralled and I wanted to know more. So a lot of this is self-taught. <laughs> I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I try and um, watch movies with my analytical eyes to kind of pick up on the little things that um, directors put into their you know films. So yeah, a lot of my analysis, I guess, is really just intuition and self teachings. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. If you have a burning question for me, go ahead and ask me down in the comment box below and I will pick one of your guys' questions, answer it and give you a little shout out here at the end. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok, Instagram and Twitter at Mamma Mia Tiffany. Guys, as always, this is such a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye everyone channeling my inner Marilyn today with a red lip lipstick. Did she ever wear red lipstick? I feel like that's like really highly associated with Marilyn. Today we are continuing with our Audrey, Audrey, Audrey. <laughs> that's bad. Let me try that again. I feel like I'm low, 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 low to the ground, low, low. My Fair Lady was released in 1964. 1964, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> the stage version received high praise from bro from Broth. Broth? I look like a Guishan. Do you guys know what a Guishan is? In Korean folklore, Guishans are basically like these like female entities with long hair and like white cloaks or like dresses and they like haunt and their hair's like in front of their face. That's what I feel like right now because of just like my hair's long and I'm wearing a white shirt and I'm just like trying not to be a scary entity. <laughs> Gotta show my my phone, my new, my new phone case. Oh, it's so cute, right? Like an orangey, peachy neon color. Isn't it cute? I love it. If you have a burning question for me, go ahead and let me down, let me down. Go ahead and let me down. <laughs> wow. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, cool.